there you go. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, upgrades, people, upgrades, as you might be... Oh god, I can hear myself. Hold on. As you might be able to tell from the previous stream that I had a camera in, the quality has improved. You can see things better. Um, because uh, I, I was in the Discord call and somebody suggested a different program uh, to use the phone. So I'm using my phone as a camera. This is, this is my phone right here. Uh, and I just connected it to my computer. And is my hair falling out? What the fuck? I'm balding. God, no. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I, I just connected it by USB, and there's some apps that can make it so your phone can be used as a camera. And what I used before was called um, Droid Cam, uh, but they suggested something called Camo, uh, and the quality is a lot better. So thank you for that suggestion. I appreciate it. Uh, it, it is very nice now that you can actually tell what the hell is on these pages. Uh, like, you can read it very nicely. Mmm, look at the quality. But yeah. Uh, and, and, since the last stream, I also improved the rig, the thing that holds my phone. Because, um, what holds my phone, well, I'll just show you, actually. Here. This... <laughs> This is my mic arm uh, that I've just attached this Lego contraption to. And in the last stream, I had the first version of this that was... I, I was happy with it at the time, but it definitely needed some improvements, and I have made those improvements. First of all, I have very much simplified the connection the, uh, to the thing. Like, it literally is just clamped in with two bars. If I pull these bars, it'll just fall out. But that's literally all it takes to, to connect it to this. But the issue that I did have with the earlier version was that if I lowered the mic stand, then the phone would be at an off angle. So literally what I did was I just added, you know, uh, one of those gear things so that I can just, you know, swivel the phone left and right. So if I get closer to the ground or, or closer to my table, see, it turns to the side and then I can just... There, done. Uh, or if I if I pull it higher up, then it looks over there, and I just turn it back. Done. So, yeah, I am I am incredibly happy with how this thing turned out. Uh, honestly, yeah, I mean, it works perfect. I don't, now I don't have any issues with it. It's very easy to take it off. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I can put my mic on it if I want to, but I forgot to do that, so my mic's just going to be sitting here. Um, but yeah. Actually, it'd be pretty nice to have the mic on the stand right now so I can actually, you know, talk. But anyway, uh, yeah, upgrades, upgrades. Shit looks awesome, honestly. Thank you, thank you. Obviously, there are purchasable versions uh, that would allow me to do this. I don't know why I'm touching it, because it's, it's perfectly... I, I just want to touch it, you know, because it's fun to... I'm proud of it, so it's fun just to, like, wobble it left to right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for the donation, uh, Morgan. Appreciate it. The uh, appreciate the ten a dollars. Uh, can't give much and can't stay long, but I love your work. Thank you. I very much appreciate it, and I appreciate the donation. Thank you very much. I just repeated myself twice, but still, I appreciate it. Um. Oh, what happened to the last live? I removed it because I didn't like the way I was talking. I just didn't like, uh, because it was really late, and I was just babbling on, and, and stuttering and repeating myself a lot, and looking back at it, I just really didn't like it. Maybe it was a knee-jerk reaction to delete it, but I did delete it, so, eh, that's just what happens. Um, but yeah, I just, I just didn't like how I was conducting myself. But yeah, hopefully this stream is gonna make up for it, because it's literally the same idea. Um... So, let's get right into it, I guess. What we're going to be doing today... Oh, another thing I might need to actually purchase. I don't think I'm going to be able to make this out of Lego. 
Uh, I I would probably want another light source like off to the uh, off to the left here, so that there's less shadows. As you might be able to tell, my light in my room is off to my right, so there's a big old shadow that gets cast. I mean, it's not that much of an issue because I draw off my left hand, but you know, it'd be nicer if there wasn't much of a shadow. But yeah, what we're gonna be working on today is we're gonna be working on a. Well, I wrote wallpaper, but it's called a banner on YouTube. Basically, when you go onto my page on YouTube, there's my profile and then all my videos like this. Uh, but then there's like this little box in the background. That's a banner. Uh, I don't know why I'm explaining it. You probably know that already. Uh, but I'm just telling you in case. Uh, and the issue with it is that what I have for the banner right now is it just says Monster Guard uh, on the banner, which is what I had as a wait, uh, as a as a waiting screen way back when I did streams on uh, on Twitch, and I just use it as a place. I I decided to put it in as a placeholder, and still haven't drawn anything to replace it yet. And now that there are other channels cropping up that have wonderful, beautiful videos and illustrations and stuff like that. Specifically talking about the um, the Eternal Ruins YouTube. If, if anybody hasn't checked out Eternal Ruins, by the way, be sure to search it up on YouTube. But the quality of videos that they make is incredible. But also one thing that very much stood out to me is they had a nice as fuck banner. Their banner was beautiful. It was like this beautiful, uh, like like the statue, the the stone children or whatever they're called. Uh, it, it was so nice to look at. And I was like, God damn, I need a good banner. <laughs> so that is the reason why we're making a banner is because uh, seeing other people's nice banners made me realize, oh shit, I still need to redraw my banner. So that's what we're doing. So what we're going to do first in the sketchbook, obviously I can't draw a banner purely in the sketchbook. The sketchbook is for the sake of brainstorming it. So we're going to try and figure out what we want to depict on the banner. We want to, of course, sort of... Um, we don't want to, like, encapsulate all of uh, the Rust and Trenches project. Like, it's not like we're trying to cram as much into one image as, as possible, but just, like, a nice image to set the mood of the channel would be would be great. Right? So, so that's what we're going to be doing in the sketchbook. Let me turn on some music for myself, by the way, not for the stream. If you want to listen to any music... Just turn on music in the background. Yeah, whoops, I, I'm instinctively turning... Hold on, I, I clicked on my drawing program on my computer because that's what I normally do uh, on streams. Uh, there, there you go. Okay, so what I wanted to... Or, or one of the ideas that I had for a banner was that I wanted to have a scene within the trenches because the trenches is sort of the the main locations of the project, right? But I wanted to have a scene of the stranger and uh, some other characters perhaps sitting around a campfire, right? That might be nice. Uh, so just some characters sitting around a campfire in the trenches, which would give moods of, you know, like a sort of storytelling around the campfire mood. Uh, so it'd be warm and comfy, but obviously that would contrast the feeling of the trenches. So we would lose some of the eeriness of the trenches, but uh, sort of replace it with warmth and mm, nice, comfortable feelings, which might work. Uh, another idea that I had was sort of a top-down perspective of the amazing layout of the trenches, so that trenches go off into I've, I've tried to do this shot multiple times hopefully this time i might be able to pull it off but yeah just amazing trenches going off into the distance and then some soldiers here at the bottom of the screen uh moving towards the camera uh and then like some silhouetted bunker cities or a bunker city in the background maybe a pillar in the middle as well sort of like way way off in the distance just like very faint uh but yeah and then fog like that, which would definitely 
give more of a vibe of the war being like horrible and stuff like that dread so this would give feelings of dread dreary uh grim that sort of stuff there could be something lurking in the background oh true true we could have something lurking in the background for this uh so lurking horror yeah or we could m maybe play around with having it be like intentionally make it so the warmth of the scene is like eerie by having it be a warmth that is not supposed to be like um because it's in a trench environment maybe have like i don't know that might be too edgy just like uh dead bodies and corpses off in a corner while these Soldiers and the strangers just casually sit there and snack on their food. That uh, might be a little too edgy. Oh, also another thing we have to think about is the the size of the banner, like the actual um shape that the banner allows. Uh, I'm gonna go to YouTube. Hold on, and I'm gonna measure it out because obviously I can't get the perfect dimensions, uh, on the page, and that doesn't really matter. But I just want to get like a sort of rough idea, um. Because it, it, it ain't that large. So it's like one ruler wide, and then... Like, five... Yeah, it's like really long, but then more thin. So it's more like this. Not even, actually. It's, it's this. Like that. Which is, that that's not much to play with, you know? That's not much area to be playing with when it comes to a scene. We'd pretty much get more of a sliver of a scene. So we really need to be able to capture the feeling that we're trying to... There's a hair on your camera? Huh? Wait. It's not hair, it's a shadow of the... Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, this is... <laughs> Sorry guys, this is this is embarrassing. This is just the wire to my uh, professional um to, to my professional headset. Uh sorry, that might be bothering some people, you know. Um I don't want to intimidate you guys, but I I got money to spend and obviously, as you might be able to tell, I clearly spend it on audio equipment. So Bilbzy, thank you for the five A dollars. Uh, I think that's Australian dollars. I'm just guessing, but appreciate it. Thank you for the A dollars. I'm sure you're already aware, but I uh, may it may be worth nothing that the banner appears very differently depending on the device, phone, TV, uh, desktop. Yeah, I, I do know that. So what I'm thinking is we're going to be mainly planning it around it being seen on a desktop. So we're going to go with the wide, big, uh, you know, wide image. Actually, that is a good point. How does it look on a phone? Uh, give me a sec. Uh, let, me, let me move to a different screen. I'm going to pick up my phone and then quickly go over to YouTube because I just want to know what it actually looks like on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Let me look at the one on... Yeah, basically, it's the same height. Yeah, it's the exact same height. It just crunches... It just removes the sides of it. So... Okay, so... Give me just a sec while I set everything back up again. Oh my god. Camo is so fucking convenient to use. Like, literally, it, it takes seconds to get it connected to the phone. And then everything's set up again. It's so good. Uh, and then back to new scene. There you go. We're back. Yeah, so uh, the only thing that the phone changes is you still see the exact same height, but it just cuts off the sides uh, like this much. So 
what we would want is for most of the detail to be sort of more to the middle. So nothing off to the sides, or not nothing, but the important stuff to be in the middle. I've gone blind? No, calm down. Simon, how could you do this? You made us blind. What? Eat the detail. No, I'm not going to eat the detail. Okay. So, if... Okay. Scene of... But yeah, if you have... I guess, um, throw out suggestions. If you have any suggestions of things that you might think would be good to add into a scene like this, then go for it. So, if we go for, like, the fireplace scene, everything sort of needs to be... I, I doubt we'd get... Unless we, like, zoom out the scene quite a lot, we won't get full body shots of the people. We'd sort of get them cut off at the head, which, honestly, that might be some interesting artistic choice that we could use, where we sort of just see their bodies and not their heads. Which might be interesting. Ooh, uh, we could also do a shot of the Witch Hunters as well, which would be more niche, but it'd be something. What are we drawing? We're drawing a banner for, for the YouTube channel. Dwarf in the back with its butt hanging out. No, no, I don't want any silly things for the banner. I do want it to be, like, a nice illustration of the world, not, like, silly shit. Yeah, oh, right, for purposes of marketing, uh, I guess I'm just gonna put the dwarf here conveniently in frame so you can see it. Uh, God, look how nice it is. Yeah, this is not the final product, by the way. Uh, I still haven't gotten the final dwarf yet. Uh, this is just a, uh, a, a test paint. But still, it is very nice. Simon, is... What? Yes, fancy dwarf head. Uh, okay. Let's see. Hmm. So, scene of the trench. I do want... I mean, we don't have to do a campfire. We can do just a scene of a trench. But then what do we put in it? Uh, you could do a fireplace surrounded uh, and make it a little less cozy by making the characters placed oddly. The soldier slumped against the log, the dwarf... No, uh, dwarves are not in the war. Uh, the mage leaning on their staff. Yeah. Hmm. Good point, actually. What kind of characters would be put into a scene like this? Because, like, I do want some interesting characters, which means I, I do want the stranger in the scene. That seems like a obvious thing to have. Um, I would like to have a mage as well. That would be nice. Then soldiers. Uh, which means if we have mages in the scenes, they'd either need to be... If, if it's Verus, we can have them be Acceleration Mages, or Disintegration Mages, or Fumigation Mages, and Verusian Soldiers. But if we want it to be Rom Soldiers, we would have to have a Healing Mage, because that's like the majority of Mages that are used in the field by Rom would be Healing Mages. Oh, also, the reason I'm drawing from this side of the book instead of the front of the book is because in the front of the book, there's some things I can't show you yet. So, I had to start drawing from the back instead. Witch Hunter. Hmm. I, 
I suppose, yeah, I mean, having Jakob or, or the Witch Hunters there would also work. Uh, slash all hunters. It would also encourage me to finish their designing. Uh, I know pretty much what Jakob, uh, Rufus, and Finn, and um, Henry look like. But I just haven't finished drawing it out yet. But yeah, the issue is, I wouldn't really picture... Jakob uh, and his squad of witch hunters being in the same location as the trenches. They would they would sort of border the trenches. Like, I expect them to sometimes get into trench territory, but it would be sort of long, abandoned trenches, right? Like, if you picture the war zone being a circle like this, and uh, the forests and, and rural area here, and uh, Rom's capital being somewhere here, the bunker cities being here. I, I expect the um the witch hunters to sort of be around this area. So they would they would sometimes maybe went venture into uh like areas of the trenches, but not really ones that are active, you know, the active ones would be here where the war is happening. No, I don't want a dwarf for the banner. The thing is, yes, I have this... Like, the dwarf has become sort of the main uh, merchandise of of the Monster Garden, but that doesn't mean I want dwarves to be a part of the whole world, you know? I made a dwarf statue, and that's about it. I don't want the whole world to be crammed full of these marketable fuckers. Um, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of getting sick of it. Uh, with, with like, how I need to cram dwarfs into everything. Uh, but, like, the dwarves, they have their place in the world, but they're not the main focus of it. It just happens to be that their design is very nice, uh, and people like it. But that doesn't mean they're the main focus of the world. They're sort of more of a, you know, they, they help Varus, they uh, make the golems that Varus uses in the war, and make weapons and armor and stuff like that. But besides that, they're not, like, involved in the war directly. So, yeah. Okay. The bit of lore at the end of your last video mentioned rats. What about rats? Oh, yeah, good point. Uh, rats as well. Okay. Uh, I th think adding too many characters in a scene is a bad idea. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is a very good point. I am not trying to add all of these characters into the scene. This is me just sort of trying to think of what possible characters I could have in the scene, right? But if we choose, then we have to choose a group of them that would be expected to be seen together. So if we want mages and soldiers, then it would have to be Varus mages, uh, or Varus mages and Varus soldiers, or Rom soldiers and uh, a healing mage from Rom. Or if we want Jakob, then we would have to do Jakob and his group of uh, witch hunters. And if we want the rats, then it would most likely be exclusively the rats. Uh, what are the rats? The rats look like... Well, I, I'm, I'm still working on their look, but they at the moment look like this. They have clothing, by the way. They wear clothes uh, and and sort of have like a scavenger vibe to them. Uh, but anatomy-wise, I'm sort of playing around with their face right now uh, to see how they would look. And I think I, I, I do like where it's going. Are they human? Yes. I mean, look at it. Yeah. So it's... it's I This one's maybe the closest to what I'm looking for. Or maybe maybe this one. Or, uh, or, or this one, but not the ears, just the, the face structure. How big are they? They're very small. They're, they're sort of like, um, uh, 
Uh, how do I say this? If this is like a rat, they wouldn't be standing like this, by the way. Um, but I'm feeling they'd be, the average person would be this tall. So they're not like very small, uh, like, like half the size of a person, but they're definitely a fair bit shorter. You know, noticeably their average height is shorter. And obviously as well, this is not like a universal face for them. Um, what I'm more thinking about is sort of like the general rat or like, the rats that the stranger is accompanying, I'm trying to design two specific rats, but on the scale of the, the, the ratness scale is a, a gradient. There will be ones that look like this. Uh, there will be ones that look more, more human, you know, still have more, more human traits and stuff like that. So it depends. It depends. Their their face is a bit wacky. It's not masks. Are you gonna design plants soon? I have a lot on my plate. I don't know what's gonna be happening soon. Uh, I know the next video is gonna be about witches. That's all I know. But yeah, so here's like a general trench scene with like a trench in the middle leading off into the distance. You know, here, like, certain... Uh, and the looming walls and broken trees at the top. We could have a um, one of the witch tiers here, which I also still haven't covered in a bit. God damn it, there's so many things I still need to cover. Oh, yeah, we could have a witch tier here. And then I do want some red roots in the scene as well. Uh, and then obviously like the very over-exaggerated sky. We could have, um, we can wait. I'm glad that you say that uh, because People constantly ask me, when is this? When is that? And I can't answer those questions because I'm one guy working on this. And sadly, uh, my perfectionism doesn't allow me to hand off pieces of this to other people. Um, I Everything has to go through me. Um, just because I, I, I just can't. You know, this, this is precious to me. So it's something that I, I very need to have very close... Uh, action or, or control of. Otherwise it doesn't turn out the way I want it to. Yeah, I fucked that sky up a little bit. Now it's hard to tell what the hell's even happening in the image. But yeah, like that. What are the rats lore? See, like, I don't understand questions like this. Like, Wait for the video. I'm eventually, like, after the witches video, I'm most likely going to do another video about rats specifically. And then you're going to get lore about them. There's no point in me telling you about them now. Uh, I do accidentally slip very often and tell things to people in streams. So, like, um, there's a lot more that I've said in streams that there are in the videos. So there's still some catching up I need to do. But I, I prefer to keep it for the videos, you know? Uh, take your time, and if people complain, then they probs don't deserve your work. Well, I mean, don't deserve my work sounds very strange. Like, it is, you can look at it or not look at it. That's pretty much as, as complicated as it is. Or it's as simple as that. You can either look at it or not look at it. Uh, but still, you know, like, even, even so, um, I, I know that, it is very simple for me just to not think about those comments, but also just 
reading them, it, it like subconsciously affects you like, yes, I know, I want to cover all the things as well. It's just that I can't all at the same time. Oh, hello, Stan. Uh, it, you see Stan in the chat? Uh, that's our writer. Stan is our writer. He has wonderful stuff. Uh, I, I linked his uh, Twitter on the most recent video. Uh, be sure to check it out. He has some wonderful fucking stories, and uh, the rat story from the last video, he helped me write, and he definitely added the soul and flavor into it that I was missing um, with with my first draft of the story, so, uh, yeah. But yeah, Stan's doing fucking amazingly. He's he's definitely gonna be the lifeblood of the book uh, when we eventually get to that. <laughs> I still haven't gotten to it yet, god. If it hit it with the flavor seasoning, yeah. Stan coming in like a chef flavoring the shit out of my stories. Yeah. Okay, so if we I, I am tempted Okay, okay. I guess let let's let's have you choose this, because uh I feel like I'm not gonna be able to make the decision. I, I find all of the options as tempting. Uh, as as all the others. So, would you guys? So, option one: Do you want uh, a image with soldiers and? Uh, wait, hold on. I was just right over here. Option one is soldiers and a mage around a campfire. Uh, all of these, by the way, will have the stranger in them. So, soldiers and a mage around the trenches. Option two is the witch hunters. Uh. So that would be Jacob, Rufus, and Finn, and uh, Henry. Or option three would be rats. So just the rat people. Hmm. I mean, yeah, now that I say it out loud, sort of the... 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 Yeah, I can see in the chat that there seems to be one one three 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 one two 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 one 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 three 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 one 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 two 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 two. Okay, shit. It seems sort of even as well. I don't like this. This seems concerningly even between all of them. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going with the witch hunters. No, only reason being, uh. The next video is going to be about witches anyway, right? So this is going to benefit me either way. It's 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 going to benefit me either way that I, I'll have to design the witch hunters and add them into a nice scene. And, 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 just by the... The sole reason of... The witch hunters are people. Like, they're, they're specific people with names. They have more character to them. You know, they, they look more distinct from each other, which means there's there's a lot more, or there could be a mo bit more visual interest in the image compared to a soldier and mage or rats. And obviously, if, if we chose soldier and mage or rat, then I'd have to sort of think about characters of the soldiers, like make characters that happen to be soldiers so they have a bit more flavor to them. But with the witch hunters, it'd be a lot easier because I already have characters that are witch hunters, which is... Jakob, Rufus, and Finn, and, uh, and, and Henry. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the Witch Hunters. Now, the environment, that's going to be a bit tough, because I, I want the trenches, but the Witch Hunters don't venture into the trenches often, or if, if they do venture into the trenches, it's more of the, the outskirts of a trench, which means I will have to draw a very tough environment, which would be basically... A transition from a forest uh, to a trench that has been... So the trench hasn't been used often. So the forest would slowly be taking over the trench. So basically, an overgrown, sort of fading trench. <laughs> How long will the stream be? However long it happens to become. Uh, I don't know. I don't plan these things. You think I plan these things? I'm in a complete mess. What do you expect from me? <laughs> or stumps of tree. Yeah, so so what we would want is sort of like so if if the normal trench environment would be these sort of barren 
burnt stumps and and ruined uh ruined burnt down sort of broken trees right so what we would want for our environment instead would be the remnants of that so we would still have the burnt stumps right but then we would also make the trenches sort of collapse in on each other a little bit like they have they have collapsed but some parts would be holding up due to the red roots oh the red roots would have to be i don't think they'd be as prominent but they'd definitely still be like peeking through the soil but they've also been overgrown and sort of integrated uh, then we would have like grass and stuff like that growing back and then in the background we would want some larger trees that are still there you know so sort of Like that, maybe. But, hmm. The issue is, okay, okay. So, if we do a scene like this, what I need to design is I need to figure out what kind of trees they have. Which might sound like a simple answer, but I wanted some sort of... So, uh, the forests around Rom have... With with the witch hunting video, I drew them as pine trees. So they just had pine trees in the in the uh so some sort of evergreen tree, right? Evergreen. Uh but the issue is I I don't really think pine trees are the hmm. Like I like bendy trees, you know? I like trees that sort of go in off directions and, and sort of create forests that are very, like, chaotic, you know? But spruce or, or pine trees would be more, like, the forest would look like this. Which is, yeah, but I don't know. Like, obviously, there, there's some interest to it because there's, like, fall. you can have broken trees, fallen branches, have variation in the terrain... You know, so it's, like, very hilly and stuff. And then have, like, lots of bushes and fauna and stuff. So you can still give it interest, but the trees are straight. You know, so that's why I was sort of thinking maybe I want to make up my own type of tree. To sort of combine all the aspects of trees that I like and, and make them into a, a unique forest. And it would also fit because of the, the Witch of the Woods, who has probably tampered with the trees and shit like that. Uh, I'm not gonna get too deep into that, but... I like birch trees as well, because of the eyes. So... And I like moss. So, it would be a forest that has moss, birch, uh... Slash bendy... Slash pine trees. Uh, then it would have uh, lots of foliage, so bushes, uh, bosh, B bosh, I just wrote bosh, close enough, uh, boshes, uh, twigs, leaves, blah, 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 just junk, uh, junk. Like, I want it to be a very messy forest, right? There's not, if... I, I feel like something that a lot of people don't notice is, or, or a lot of people don't notice, I don't want to group people together into a category because some people do it really well, but like, sometimes I see people don't push forests far enough. Like, you, you draw underbrush, yeah. Like, they draw trees on like a flat plane, and then some grass, and that's about it. But like, a normal forest is filled with so much shit. Like, there's just so much random shit some of the trees fell over and then fucking mushrooms started growing on them there's bushes here and there and the ground isn't flat either there can be elevation everywhere which just makes more interesting landscapes one of them fell over and created some sort of makeshift bridge and then like a beaver or some sort of creature made a den here and a fucking uh like a like a bit of a bird's nest or something you know like just more things 
you know. And obviously, every scene doesn't have to be jam-packed with things. It's just that, you know, just tiny little things to add variation instead of just flat plain with tall trees. But yeah, so maybe what we would want is a type of tree that bends at the bottom or, or, or gives some, like, interesting variation. Uh, uh, oh, also, I like roots. Like, I like it when the roots do root things, you know? When, when the roots are visible on the surface and they sort of, like, m make the forest ground. Like, uh, for example, there's a tree, like, here... And then the ground sort of fell away due to, like, running water or something. And then the roots sort of held it together. So the roots are, like, sticking out of this, like, uh, bank on the, on the side of the dried up river and stuff like that. So I want something like this. And then some, like, really expressive bark. Like, I want something that sort of has, like, a feeling to it. Uh, and then... Maybe also the eyes of the birch up higher. So we could make it so the bottom of it is like a thicker layer of bark that gives away to the top of the tree. So it like transitions in color halfway up, sort of. And then transitions into a birchy like tree that then goes into <laughs> a pine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a stupid tree. This is way too complicated. But yeah. Something like... Like that, perhaps. But then it's like... I don't know where the leaves would start. Do you want the leaves to... Because if they're just up here, I don't know. We can have it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can have it so there's smaller branches down here. So instead of just being like, bup, bup, and then leaves like this, it's more like the the leaves here, and then like sort of smaller patches of leaves leading up to it, like this, until it reaches the 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 bigger plume. Yeah. Uh, something like that. And then, oh, right, the moss. <laughs> this is oh, this is going to be a mess. Like, if every tree is this detailed, it's going to be a fucking nightmare. Because then, okay, so we'll have a transition of dark, so dark uh, wood to, like, a lighter shade for the birch. And then green moss... <laughs> Dark, like, I, I don't think I'm going to have the moss be too bright. It's going to be sort of a, a darker moss. And then the mushrooms as well. God damn it. Right. And then there'll be mushrooms and shit like that as well. Goodness gracious. This is going to be a mess of a... Tr that, that's... I think that's too much. That might be too much. Hmm. Uh, the angel oak would work as a good reference. Okay, let me search that up. Uh, give me just a sec. Angel oak. Ooh! Oh, I like that. That's bad. It's bad that I like it, because that's not a per. That's not a pine tree, because, like, that that would, you know, the visuals of the, so, um, 
if we're thinking about the force from a distance, like if you see the silhouette of, across the horizon, you would just see, you know, the 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 treetops like this, uh, which wouldn't be possible with that kind of tree because that's a sort of, you know, that's not a pine tree. <laughs> Uh, you can make a bunch of trees, which all look like messed up mixtures of many types. True. I mean, this is, this is by the way, this is not like, oh, every tree in the forest is like that. Forests in the real world, obviously, are made up of a bunch of different types of trees uh, that are, like, in different zones, or some of them are, like, multiple trees in, in a, one area that are, like, uh, together and stuff like that. So this is this is not the universal tree. It's just going to be the tree for the sake of this scene, uh, and maybe will be reoccurring in others as well. But yeah. Ooh. Uh, something else that we could do that I really like in trees as well is when there is a parasitic tree, or it doesn't have to be parasitic, but if there's another type of tree that uh, latches on to the first one. So we have a main tree. Uh, like this, and then we have a second one that sort of like coils its way up uh, and adds like a lot of l lovely um, variation to the to the look of it. So that could also be interesting. Strangle fig, yeah, yeah, some sort of like strangle fig type thing. That could also be interesting. But, hmm. I do like the... How do I... I, I like the bark sort of giving away that the, this gives. Like, if I can exaggerate that, where the stump sort of looks like it came from a different tree, pretty much. Like, like this. And then it's, like, peeled away and starts turning into, like, a thinner tree. Like, this might be really weird. Maybe, would would it be weird to have the pine split into multiple ones? No, no, I don't... Yeah, like this very knotted base with like lots of curls and, and swirls in it. And then sort of emerging out of it is like this very straight tree. So we can still get the ground visual of like a forest that is very sporadic. Like if we're looking at it, I'm, I'm guessing the trees would be sort of this big. um, Or maybe even like this big, like if you're next to one. So... If you're looking at the forest from eye level, if this is like a scene with the forest, then most of the trees would look very gnarly and, and curly. But then as you move further away from them, they sort of give away to the straighter lines. And it doesn't have to be that all the trees are like all curly and fucked up. Some of them can still be like uh, very normal. I like the idea of a bird sitting on a branch and being exploded by fire. Dude, what the fuck? Yeah, you can make trees which have patterns which are able to attract mana and thus be able to use magic to some degree. No, 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 I don't want the trees using magic, Jesus. But yeah, something like this, like, the, the bark sort of gives me Baroque pattern vibes, or I don't know if that's the... The right era, but you know the, uh, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, these patterns, you know, these fucking things, uh, that you see on like ornate things often. 
Like, that's sort of the vibe the bark is giving me. Which I, I think I like. Um, Swiss stone pine. Okay, let me search that up. Okay, Swiss. Oh, God. Yeah, it's not very high off the ground, though, which is kind of an issue. You know, it'd be hard to move underneath this damn thing. Hold on, let me just search up pine forest, get some images of pine forests on my screen. To sort of get a better idea of what the hell I'm working with. Yeah, pine forests are very flat and then trees up. That's pretty much it. There are some that have, like, more f underbrush at the bottom, but that's... Yeah, I sort of like it. I I like that it comes out of the bottom of the. Why does it do that? If 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 we're thinking about it in in tree evolution wise, why would it want to have a bottom of the tree that is like a lot thicker and sturdier? Would it be to protect against like um forest fires and stuff like that? Maybe, or maybe it's something against floods. Like this bottom bit is more. Uh, better against flooding and stuff like that, but I wouldn't expect this part of the forest to flood often, really. Against munching animals to attract a favorable mate. The tree is thick? No, the, tr the tree is not thick to attract favorable mates. Um, would you consider to add some thorns on the plants? Yeah, some plants would obviously have thorns. Um, we could have... Oh, uh, you could design a grotesque version of the impaling bird. Uh, which hook up, hooks up his prey. Yeah, that would be fun. That could be something interesting. Uh, we could have Rat Catcher in the background, like a shadow. No, that doesn't make sense. No, we're not going to have the Rat Catcher. It's either the Witch Hunters and then just the Witch Hunters. We're not going to add, like, characters that don't make sense to be there. Uh, and especially not the Rat Catcher in the background, like a fucking boogeyman. That doesn't make sense for him. Uh, not sure what our, uh, what we are designing, but... Uh, here, but having a look at Ancro Angkor Watts Strangler Figs. Uh, sure. Okay, let me look at that again. How the hell do you... Angkor... Oh, these things. Yeah, I know these things. Right, I drew these for fun ones. Uh, for practice. Yeah, they're interesting, yeah. We might be able to do something with these. Um, maybe there could be a... Like, creature they develop that... That protects their base and you get some... Can we have a regular-ass fox, or perhaps a deer? Yeah, I, I feel like that would make more sense. Uh, maybe we'll have that. 
But yeah, maybe the bottom of that is a little too thick with a tree. Sort of more subtle might fit better. Like this. Hold on. Let me search up some images of tree roots. Okay, I gotta go now on the uh, personal project. Uh, good luck with the stream, Sam. Remember, keep it sexy. I'm always keeping it sexy, Stan. Thank you very much for hopping in. Appreciate your company. Uh, take care. Good luck on your personal projects. See ya, Stan. Uh, maybe burls in the tree that could fit the design nicely. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at references of, like, forests with lots of roots right now because... What I'm sort of thinking is like the roots, the the roots of these trees don't go deep; they go wide. So the forest floor around the base of these trees is sort of made up of a lot of roots. Like it's hard to run in this forest, honestly, just because of how many pitfalls and little, you know, things you can fall down. But what that does is that if it does like rain heavily suddenly, it gives an opportunity for the forest to sort of turn into a layered design like you can have a uh, trees here like this um uh, that are have roots that span across and hold each other up and then the the water having washed away the dirt underneath the roots has made like another layer underneath so the roots have sort of turned into a um a roof you know so the the forest has like multiple like there there might be like little crawlways and and hidey holes in the forest. For is more of a drunken forest, fallen trees and ditches everywhere, without having to make just weird. Having to make just weird rooty trees. Uh, yeah, I guess a drunken forest. I don't. I didn't know it had a term for it. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking for like a like a fun little, goofy forest. You know. But yeah, I feel like that would work a lot. But the okay, now now there's the issue as well. I like dead dead leaves on the ground, but if we have pine trees, the leaves are gonna be fucking pine needles. You know? So would but I like the silhouette of a pine tree. So are we gonna make a pine tree that just has leaves instead? Like normal leaves? I mean Hmm. So we can have the silhouette of a pine tree, but just remove the pines from the pine tree. <laughs> so we in, in fall and stuff like that, there wouldn't be any leaves, because with an evergreen tree, the leaves don't, you know. But but these guys will have fallen leaves. We are already too far gone. What do you mean? What do you mean? Are you discouraging fun? Are you are you are you a party pooper? This is the fun part of the dining. What the hell are you talking about? We've not gone too far. We need to go further. Let's make the tree red. Not a white tree, make it red. But yeah, actually, mm, good point. Thank you, me. It'd be fun to have the inside of the tree, like the the wood inside the tree to have sort of like a nice reddish tone to it. So that when you cut the tree or stuff like that, it looks like it's bleeding. Doesn't redwood have the same? I mean, redwoods are too big. That's too big. Why? Stop here! But yeah. Um, maybe some... Well, that might be too many colors working. Uh, but yeah, we want green... I wish I could color it, but obviously I'll have to do that in the uh, in the in the computer program in Creta. There you go. I had a brain fart. Couldn't fucking think of what the hell prog program I use. 
you ever seen rainbow eucalyptus uh, you can have many color trees you want if that is a real thing hold on Rainbow eucalyptus. Oh my god. The fuck? I mean, I know these images are most likely very heavily edited. Uh, because I don't think they are that... Are, nah, yeah, they definitely upped the saturation of the images to make that look brighter. They look like melted crayons. Okay. Yeah, this one looks a little more right. Yeah, it's still though, even even though uh it's not as they they didn't change the opacity, the the cre the trees are still very nice. Like they are still very colorful. But yeah, it does prove a point that we can have trees in like very weird, crazy colors. So yay. But yeah, this is sort of more the proportions that I'm going for through the tree. I think the bottom of this is a little too thick. Um, sort of want something a little more mild, like this, perhaps. And then the tree, uh, the the shell of the tree breaking away, and the and the strong inner stem emerging. Blah 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 blah. Okay, like this. Yeah, that gives it some personality, all right? And then the leaves, like this. Okay, and then the leaves would go, uh, I can't fucking... There, the leaves go up to there. And then the roots would be sort of very broad and wide. Yeah, and then we have the the bushes and fucking foliage, and in the end we have a forest that is literally impossible to maneuver through. Kind of looks like you're streaming from jail. What do you mean? What makes it look like I'm streaming from jail? Is it the poor condition of my desk that makes you think that? My desk is perfectly fine. What are you talking about? This is what a normal desk looks like. Fucking waterlogged and pen stains and wearing and slice marks from where I was testing my shiv. I mean, um, where I was, uh... Uh, where I was scratching out of nervousness. I don't have a shiv, obviously. Those are illegal here. I mean, uh, I... Yes, whatever. <laughs> a normal desk in jail, no. It's the lack of the dwarf. Oh, God, when the fuck did I move the dwarf away? My goodness, I can't believe it. I'm a terrible marketing person. Here you go. I'm gonna lay it down, even, so you can see its face. Okay, now I know why the fuck I moved the- th it's in the way! Hold on, let me- There. Sort of thinking about, like, what the forest would look like. I mean, this has nothing to do with the fucking scene at this point. Because we were literally just going to do... We, we did go a little off track. Because the only thing we were going to do was have, like, a sort of overgrown trench scene with these guys, like, silhouetted in the background. But now I'm designing the whole fucking forest. It's fine, though. Okay, we do want, like, uneven land. So there's lots of hills and stuff. Yeah, I, I think this tree works. Yeah, okay. Um, 
So, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Page number three. We filled out no, four. We filled out four pages while filled out. There's an empty corner. Oh, blasphemous. But it's sort of hard for me to get that. Well, let's just draw it sideways, I guess. Um, whoops. Oh, no! Go! <laughs> God, he's dead! Oh, oh, okay. The be trees be tree and yes. So let me dr try drawing the scene. So I want, like, an overgrown trench, right? That's sort of, like, starting to collapse again. Uh, then we have the burnt trees which were used to probably reinforce the trench so we can have some of the trees like sort of be used as, as slats on the side of the trench, but they're like g getting grown over as well. I don't want too many like bushes because that's going to like just cover the view, but I do want some little bushness going on. Uh, and then mostly moss as well. We can have like hints of armor sort of peeking through the moss uh, and stuff. And then have uh, the hills like that. And then sort of trees like this. Like, there'd still need to be some trees. And then we can have, you know, that look at the top. Like that, and then we can have the, the campfire in the middle, and then the stranger off to the side. Uh, and then I was sort of thinking uh, having Jakob with his instrument would be wonderful. By the way, we're not going to see most of this damn image. We're going to see, like, this. <laughs> so we're not going to see the damn trees! God, why did I design the trees? But uh, either way, I, I want Jakob... Jakob, Jakob, uh, playing his instrument. Uh, then I want... Where do I put Rufus and Finn? Uh, I feel like... Henry would definitely be... Where would Henry be? Henry likes... He, he'd be carving, right? He'd be carving his, his... Oops. He'd be carving his little wooden figures. So... I sort of feel like I have to put him, like, here. Actually, yeah, I feel like having him be, like, here and carving the figures and the stranger sort of, like, if, if, if Henry is, like, taking up this space and just being looming and fucking huge, you know, carving his figures, and then the stranger just sitting next to him, like, this little, you know, legs, like, together, hands on his fucking knees, <laughs> just being like, hmm, yes, I'm trying to make myself small. And then, where do I put Rufus and Finn? Uh, Henry is, well, you'll get to learn about all of them in the next video, hopefully. Uh, a little more about them. But yeah, and then, fireplace, and Rufus over here. Where do I put Rufus and Finn? I, I guess, I mean, yeah, I could just have them be here on this side instead. And then, okay, what are they cooking? What are they cooking? What do you think they're cooking? I feel like it would be a combination of rations and also something they have scavenged from the forest. So some type of mushroom, probably like a mushroom stew with maybe like a bird they hunted or like some sort of rodent. Uh, yeah, like a rat. So I, I feel like stews would be the most reliable source of energy that they could be making. So like a bit of a cauldron. So like uh, one of these setups, you know, one of one of uh, the classic cauldron over fire type thing going on. Rat and mushroom stew. 
Okay, yeah, I feel like that sounds that sounds tasty. And they probably have some like pemmican. Uh no. Um what's that called? Uh the the hardtack. Hardtack. Like the that like really hard bread stuff that, that soldiers used to have. Or even uh people on ships used to have as well. Ship biscuits. I mean, those are pretty much the same thing. Ship biscuits, hardtack. I don't even know if they were called ship biscuits. Fish soup. Where did they get the fish? There are no fish around. Just believe it, it's fish. Okay, I like that, actually. I like the idea of them just saying it's fish. And the stranger being like, yeah, but there's, like, there's no any, no rivers nearby. And they're like, ah, it's fish. Everything tastes like fish anyway. It doesn't matter, you know? Or maybe it's just a running joke amongst the witch hunters themselves. It's like, mm, yeah. what's in the stew, by the way? What did you catch? It's like, fish. Fish? Yeah. Land fish. <laughs> what? Land fish? <laughs> the fuck? And if they eat, like, bird, they'll just say, mm, yeah, sky fish. <laughs> Classic sky fish stew. It might be, yeah, that might just be fun. Maybe it's, um, like, like if we think about it from, from the character's point of view, maybe it's some of, or, or, what if it's, uh, one of the character's favorite food is fish, right? So, but, so to get them to eat something, the other characters sort of lied to them and were like, yeah, yeah, trust me, it's fish. And at first it was, you know, like, to lie about them, but the lie kept getting more and more ridiculous to the point where now it's just turned into a running joke, where at first it was like, okay, yeah, I can still believe you might have gotten fish somehow, and it's in this stew, but you mashed it up enough that I couldn't tell, but then now it's like, there's literally a fucking ch <laughs> like, there's a chicken wing in here, <laughs> and it's like, Henry, it's fish, just eat it, okay, it's, it's fish, <laughs> trust me, bro. Yeah, but, like, it's probably that the character that likes fish the most has probably... He, he's gotten used to the food as well. Like, it doesn't matter to him anymore that it's not fish, but it's just funny to set, tell him, like, oh, yeah, it's fish. So, yeah, it's fish stew. Fish and mushroom. Like that. And then I do think it'd be nice to have some, like... Uh, sort of sticks driven into the ground with, uh, I'm sorry, I'm very bad at managing the camera. I should probably move this up so you can see me, or see the, what I'm drawing. Uh, have some, like, things strung out. I, I, I don't want to go with just the simple one stick and shoving it, shoving it into a rat and, like, just tying it around. I want to go with, like, the, this method, um, you know, where you, you split it, or, or maybe you have multiple sticks, and then you sort of, like, splay it open. Like this, you know? So you flay the rat, and then splay it out between multiple sticks, and then have that hanging next to the fire. You know, I feel like that would be a lot more fitting for uh, the witch hunters, just because... They, they've prepared it so much, it's that they have figured out better ways of, like, a tanning rack? No, no, not like a tanning rack. This is just a way of, like, uh, in, in Thailand we have these as well, where you just, like, sort of splay open a chicken, or a part of a chicken, and you have it, like, between multiple sticks. Or, like, that Japanese thing where they do the, uh, you know, the, the eel? Where they cook the eel and they, they have it between, like, multiple sticks like this. You know? So that sort of thing going on. Same way with the, uh, with the rats. Oops, sorry. Chicken ratfish, yep. Yeah. I don't think they would, sk like, skin the rat's hair either. Because it'll just burn off anyway. So they'd probably just... Like, it, it might be a case where they just put it really close to the fire, have the hair burn off of the damn thing, then, like, brush the 
the the the dust dusted hair off of the thing and then stick it into the side of the fire to finish cooking it. Uh but yeah, I don't I, well, they they still want to enjoy their food. Like they're not dead inside to the point where they don't want to have tasty food. So, maybe they will like treat the thing properly. Can you skin a rat? Is that a thing? Like if if you were to cook a rat, would you yeah, you'd want to skin it first, right? It's not like a... Rat skin ain't like... Is not like chicken skin. Where you just want, oh yeah, I want some crispy rat skin on my rat meat. I'd, I'd rather just skin the whole thing. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's do that instead. They skin the whole thing. And then put it on a fire. Okay, but I like that we're getting like small little bits of... Of character in everything, um, in the way they cook and stuff like that. How much are sweets plausible? Sweets are very plausible. There would be, uh, I, I for sure there would be plants that produce like uh, sweet, you know, like uh, sort of maple syrupy type things that come out of trees that they could definitely turn into some kind of candy. Fruits that could be mashed and boiled uh, to turn into like a sticky syrup. Then oh, that that'd be perfect actually. They could do like something that uh there's a thai snack that we have where you basically like uh you you make like mango paste you like boil the shit out of mangoes till it becomes like a concentrated syrup and then you sort of pour it out onto these big sheets and then you lay it in the sun to dry and you basically get um what the hell is that called fruit on the foot it's sort of like a fruit on the foot thing like you get sort of this like thick jelly thing and then they cut it into squares and then roll it up so you have these sort of cigar shaped like fruit on the foot uh mango sticks uh and depending on how they like depending on their their mixture i don't know if they add anything i've never like seen the process done myself or stuff like that but i know the basic gist of it but some that i've eaten have been more sticky like it definitely like you had to really yank it to, to get it to come apart and it's like sort of sticks to your teeth. Some other ones were more crumbly where you can quite easily bite off, but then it's not chewy. It's sort of like crumbles in your mouth. So it depends. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely do something like that with other fruits as well. So I, I feel like candy and stuff like that would definitely be a possibility, especially for like, um, Oh, you know what? You know what the witch hunters could do? Jams. They could totally do jams. I feel like they'd love jams, you know? They have they have the, like, shitty bread that they have. Something that would get it to be way better <laughs> would be jams. And I feel like in this kind of forest, there'd be a bunch of, like, little berry trees and berry bush uh, berry bushes that you can get some, you know, some, some uh, berries from. Jams. The witch hunters... <laughs> Love jam. There you go. That's a that's a lore. That's a piece of lore now. The witch hunters love jam. What do you think? Well, I I sort of was thinking that the um the the little thing that they used to string up the rat would be like, pretty makeshift. Like, it's not like they have a dedicated tool to do this. Like, most of the things, I feel like, when they when they make a camp, uh, they would sort of have to make it from scratch again. And the easiest way to do this, I think, would actually... This is a poor drawing of how I think it would be easily done. You could just get, like, a sort of nice uh, stick that can, like... that That's, like, more of a stretchy uh, wood. And then just cut it into free slits and then just splay all three out, or maybe just two, you could also just do two, and then just have another stick at the end of it, like this, uh, and then just sort of tie it at the corner with some little string or something, like that, and then you have a frame to string the, uh, or, or impale the, the, the rat on. So that's probably how they would do it.
Honey candy was pretty common too. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, honey candy would be nice too. Okay, so campfire with the with the. So we know what we want now. We want campfire with the with the pot, fish stew. Haha. Uh, -huh. uh, the stäbchen, stäbchen, the the sticks on the on the side of the campfire, roasting. Then we want Henry sitting next to the stranger, and Jakob and Rufus and Finn chilling on the other side. Jakob fucking chilling, playing his tunes, you know? And them all set in a scene of a overgrown trench with weird-ass trees. Cool. We sort of have a, like, a general idea of what we want. Why not an Argentinian roasting cross? Let me search that up. I don't know what that is. Move. Oh, it is just a cross, huh? Hmm. I mean, it could be both. I don't. I don't. Both are valid options, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh Let's let's do that. Sorry, I lost uh, lost my train of thought for a little bit. Okay, could the scene take place in a strange place, maybe an old dead dead pit filled with bones covered by these trees? I mean, okay. If I I I do understand where you're coming from with like making it more of an interesting place like that where like there's something happened there. But think of it from the perspective of the witch hunters. Why would they want to set up camp in a pit full of dead people <laughs> instead of, you know, a nice little peaceful corner with some moss they can sit on and and start a nice little fire. No, let me make camp on these piles of bodies. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that edgy. Like they, they, they still want joy. <laughs> they still want joy in their life. Reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like they'd, they'd want like a bit of a peaceful place, you know. Okay, let's try and draw the scene like a little bit bigger, so we can. Hold on. Let me move my my my. Oh, look at that. Look, look at look at that. Ooh, let me just you know just move it around a little bit more just to show how good it is. Whoops, I bumped the mic. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Who made this? God, why is it so good? I can't believe it. Who built this? Who built this? <laughs> uh, okay, campfire, the middle, pot, the dip, the dip, there, then the, uh, the rats strung up like that. Then I want the two logs, sort of like this. Uh, I, I want maybe one of the logs was placed down and the other one is sort of just like a broken tree that has fallen over. So we can have some like roots off to the side here. Like the, the tree has been unrooted uh, or whatever. Uprooted. There you go. That's the word. Uh, and then we have the trench sort of swooping down in the middle or the remnants of the trench swooping down the middle. Okay, like that. Uh, I do still want some, like, remnants of war to happen, though. So we definitely can have, like, some sort of faint glimpses of, like, chest plates and stuff like that. Uh, where they've, like, everything else is rotten away. Uh, they, the leather straps, leather pouches, stuff like that would be gone. So it would pretty much be just the, the armor left. Uh, with, like, mostly covered in moss and rust. 
and stuff like that. And then we have Henry here doing his wood carving. Uh, and we have the stranger sitting awkwardly next to him. Uh, then we have the birds on his shoulder. Wait, no. Yeah, one of the birds. This thing across there. And then we got Jakob chilling, playing his instrument. And uh, Rufus and Finn. I'd say Rufus and Finn is probably preparing some of the, like, the more of those rat sticks. So perhaps we can sort of show that there's, like, some more rats that they've, like, hunted and they're just, like, laying here. I'd say two more. Don't want there to be too many. So two on the fire, two more here, and one in his hand. That he's like stringing up on the on the sticks and then some more sticks so obviously there's a fire going on so we need like some sticks off to the side uh to show that they're like fueling the fire uh some rocks around the fire would be nice as well and obviously the ground would have had to be cleared as well so the ground around the fire would be dirt as well then the backpacks of the hunters would be sort of laying off to the side as well here and then let's do the other backpack like back here uh, and another one like here like that there you go and then also um they would be paranoid for witches and stuff like that so they would have to have some sort of stuff to protect against witches like they believe so i want like they'd have a salt barrier first of all but then also like so if if we have like the the broken branches and stuff like that here on the background we could see that there's like this faint sort of red string perhaps that's like strung around the area and tied around trees and has like little charms and stuff like that set up on it like they're you know trying to protect against something Uh, love the moment when the pillarman showed up and said it's pillaring time and pillared all over the place. Oh yeah, that is literally my favorite part of the lore, honestly. Yeah, it's only uh, it, it's close second with the time that uh, uh, with the time that that Otis the dwarf just suddenly popped into frame and like the most tense and uh, most tense and and in like, impactful moment of the story and just started breakdancing and broke the tension right away, you know? Definitely, like, a Marvel movie moment. Yeah. I couldn't... I, I, I really loved when the stranger was having a really emotional scene between him and, and the friend that he was about to be, lo like, about to lose, you know? Uh, and he was clutching his friends in his arms and being like, no, no, don't go. And then what happens was the, the funny sidekick cracked a joke in the very, you know, in the very sad scene and just broke the tension. And all the characters just went, ha 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 ha. And the guy who's dying also went, ha 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 and then died. That was, that was the best part. And then the characters spent no time mourning, by the way. Like, literally seconds after that scene, they didn't even bother burying the body. They just chucked it to the side, moved on to their adventure, and literally just forgot that guy existed and started cracking jokes like nothing happened. You know, quips and jokes are what make a story great. The 15-minute shower scene of The Stranger was a bit weird, but I enjoyed it anyway. Whoa! already answered this but can the dwarves and other creatures be mages uh is it limited to humans no uh, other creatures can use magic uh, other creatures used magic way long before humans figured it out so humans are honestly trying to figure out how to use magic uh like they're trying to catch up with creatures uh, but 
dwarves don't use like merit magic the same way humans do. Like they don't uh cast spells themselves. They're more focused on making magical things. Uh, so they're they're more focused on ifs and stuff like that. Uh, Oh, you know what could be the case, by the way? Because this trench is so far away from the rest of the uh, war zone, it could be that um, back in this time when this trench was dug, they weren't using red roots to reinforce the trenches yet, so that's why the trench sort of like collapses in on itself quite a lot. And also, uh, I, I do want some like slats uh, that are still trying to hold up the trench somewhat. There you go. But I think that's, like, a pretty good scene. Issue is, we will see this much of it. But that's still main focus. We still see all four characters, uh, and a bit of the sides, you know, the underside of the root here. We can have, like, a little bit of a creature here for fun, just, like, a little, little image. Um, and over to this side, hmm. would, would the bells be here? What would be... I'm thinking something. I mean, it doesn't have to be... It's it's off to the side. No one's going to look there, but still, I want like some sort of balance. Oh, and also just like broken... Yeah, actually like just some broken branches and stuff like that in the foreground to sort of frame the image would be nice as well. Oh, we can have it so, okay, if if this is like a branch in the foreground, like we're sort of looking, uh, if we look from the scene of, from the top down, uh, the scene is sort of constructed like this, like the trench is like a half circle shape, the two logs like this, uh, Henry's here, Stranger here, Jacob here, Rufus and Finn here, the fireplace is here, and the trench sort of leads back in this location, like here. You can see that it get, goes deeper uh, behind the fireplace, and then all the trees are here. We sort of think that there's like more trees over here as well that are in front of the camera, like sort of blurred out. And then we can have like one of the red ropes that are seen like here in the background sort of coming out in front of the camera a little closer so you can maybe tell what is on the red rope. And then we can have that, well, what, what do you... What kind of thing would they put on, like, a red string to protect against witches? What kind of belief do you think they have of things that might protect against witches that they would tie to red string and put it around a camp? Is this brainstorming for a game? No, no, it's for the background of the, of the YouTube channel. Silver coins? Gnome hats? Fingers? Ugh. I mean, yeah, some finger coins might be interesting, actually. It would be really heavy. Ears are actually interesting. For some reason, ears are interesting. Like, just have, like, these very petrified ears strung up on a string. Are they witches' ears? Are they people's ears? Who knows? Oh, in that case, actually, hair could be interesting as well. Teeth, yeah. Teeth and hair. Some weird shit. I like ears. Yeah, I like ears for some reason. It's like a, it's like a protective barrier that also notifies you if things are close. That's why there's ears on it. An arm? Too much. <laughs> Not arms. Knotted hair. Yeah, I sort of was thinking like bundles of, of knotted hair could be interesting too. 
So hair, ears, and teeth. Oh, candles. Yeah, candles are actually a good point. Hmm. Finally caught you live. Hello, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. Um, we're currently working on a banner for the YouTube background. So uh, we're thinking of a scene with the witch hunters like sitting around a fireplace in an abandoned trench that has been overgrown by the forest and has some like nice little details in it. Bells! True. Bells. Uh. Finger bones? Mm, not finger bones. Bells I like, though. Bells make sense. Ooh. Snail shells are also interesting. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let me draw the scene again. Maybe get some more out of it. Ugh, God. Okay. I I maybe I want to remove all of the characters first and just draw the scene because the characters do block it quite a bit and I want to sort of just figure out like a interesting shape for the terrain first. I do think I want a tree that fell over the trench. That is always a nice detail. Also breaks up the middle a little bit. Like that. And then we can that's also an excuse to see the um the rest of the tree. So instead of seeing we don't see the tops of the trees, which means we don't know what they look like, but if one of the trees fell over then we see the rest of the tree. What the hell is going on with the camera? Hey. Focus. Uh, ooh, God, he's blurry. Holy shit, he's about to pass out. Don't worry. Focus. Buddy, you're fine. You're fine. Drink some water. Goddamn. Rat tails. Oh, yeah. Rat tails is a good idea. <laughs> Stay with me. Yeah, my camera's, my camera's losing it. Okay, like this, and then the the blank spot, the campfire, and then I I oh I do think like having the logs in the background da, 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 like this to still show that it's a trench, and then oh we can have like a proper body here actually, maybe sort of grown over. By some roots, uh, and like some roots also like peeking over the side of the trench, and then the broken trees. Da, 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 da. This and lots of roots.
hope, and then the roots of this tree. And then the tree is starting to come in in the background. And the the sky would be sort of like a mix of red and um okay, the trees start creeping on. The 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 sky would sort of be like a very soft orange cuz we're further away from the from the war and the sky in the war is orange, but the sky in the um by the way, if if you haven't noticed, I I like messing around with skies. Uh, because I don't feel like it's really necessary to have skies, or uh, pretty much anything in the image. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to have it stick to realism, like, 100%. Like, oh no, I can't do that to the sky because the, 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 uh, you know, the area, this, like, the, and this time period, the sky would be like this, blah, 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 and so I have to make, like, a boring sky. No, I really like, like, pushing the sky to sort of emphasize the mood of where this is. So that's why, like, the sky in the war zone is, like, a really orangey yellow with, like, this sort of brewing clouds and stuff like that. And in the, um, in the Witch Hunter uh, animation, I made it so the sky was sort of, like, a approaching storm. Like, there was about to be a storm. Well, it rained in some of the scenes, so I guess the storm is happening. But I sort of like there to be a permanent storm. Uh, so I feel like a mix of, like, a sort of stormy with, like, a hint of... So I'm sort of feeling like we would want the war to be over in this location, like, back into the... Uh, it, it, to give it some... Oh my god, I can't talk. If the war... <laughs> war is over here. There you go. Done. That's literally all I had to say. So, we- the war is in this direction. So maybe there's like a sort of sunset effect happening, where the clouds are still not very orangey here, but it sort of slowly is turning orange here, which could look like a sunset, but it's actually just the distant war. There you go. Yeah, I feel like removing the characters first definitely helped me get some more character out of the scene. Because the scene is pretty much a character as well. That's like how I've been trying to like get better at scenes, is to sort of think of them as characters, and that they also need a personality and a story to tell as well. Just, not just the characters, like the scenes should have that too. So let's make that. And the story of this scene as well. It's an abandoned fucking trench with, uh, like, oh, oh my god! Funky McNoggins! Welcome! Welcome to the stream, oh silent patron! Jesus Christ, once again, coming in clutch with the $100 donation. No fucking, not even a single word said. Jesus. Thank you very much. I, I, I give my dwarf a kiss on the head for you. Mwah. You're welcome. I don't know what that had to do with your donation, but still. I, I'm, I'm going to not... I'm going to treat my dwarf well because of you. I'm going to not abuse it. Because uh, I normally, like, smack its head <laughs> when I don't have anything to do. I just smack it on the head. So I'm going to be withholding from that. 
uh, for a while because of those $100. Thank you very much. You've saved a dwarf today, you know? Donate now and save the poor dwarves. <laughs> Simon went bunkers. Yeah, holy shit, Monkey. Thank you. Uh, as always, uh, one of the biggest fucking uh, uh, donators of the channel. I mean, honestly, I'm... <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Yeah, very much appreciate it, like always, Bunky, man. Your donations are a very big help. But yeah, how are you doing, by the way? Uh, also, do you know what we're working on? If not, I can uh, tell you again if you'd like. Okay, something like that. There you go. You start seeing it, or is is it starting to become more clear where the trench is in the tree line in the fallen branch? I don't even know. Okay. Don't mind the... the... Why the fuck is there even a trench here? It's in the middle of the forest. I don't know why the hell there's a trench here. Um, but no, it, it's not supposed to be in the middle of a forest. Uh, I don't know. How do I, I guess I can have like a break in the forest here to sort of show that it's like leading off more into the distance. So like, yeah, maybe, maybe that will be good. So the tree line is more like this in front, then it leads off here and then it cuts off and then the trees go like this. So it sort of looks like it goes further this way. Now that might be better. And this one sort of curves like that. Yeah, like, like... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Are those burnt trees? Um, There would be, like, these burnt trees here. Actually, yeah, good point. I feel like the trees shouldn't be this dense. I think it's a little too dense for, for the thing I'm going for. Hmm. Yeah, let's remove some of these trees, so, like, make it more sparse, I suppose. Just joined. Oh, um, we've been observing. Ah, nice. Okay. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're wondering what I'm working on, it's a banner for the YouTube channel, like for the background. Uh, because I have been using a very boring placeholder banner for way too long, and I saw some other channels, uh, like the Eternal Ruins, that have a wonderful banner in the background that really adds to their front page of the YouTube channel, and I felt like, damn, I really need to step up my game. Uh, würde man nicht mehr Holz im Graben verwenden, uh, wenn er sich im Wald befinden? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how the hell I... Hmm. I mean, does a trench in the forest make sense? Du sprichst Deutsch? Ja, ich bin Deutsch. Halt, ich bin in Deutschland geboren, also ich kann Deutsch sprechen. Um, but my 
language I'm most comfortable with is German. Uh, blah, 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 is is English. Yeah, because uh, I didn't learn English in in Germany. I learned it in um, in in Thailand. I learned it by myself through fucking uh, uh, documentaries and uh, YouTube channels and stuff like that. Because I like that sort of stuff, and I sort of had to learn English to be able to understand it. Cod piece on the banner? No, we're not doing cod piece on the banner. How many more details are you thinking of adding? This this is pretty much it. This is this is the limit of the details. We have the, the string that's strung around the camp uh, for protection. We have the witch hunters, the bags laying around the broken tree stumps, the the fire in the middle with the pot and the the thingies on it, and, and the trench with you know the side um, reinforcements and um, uh, the the dead bodies like just remnants of of armor and stuff like that. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. But yeah, I do wish I did have a sort of small German accent, uh, because, well, I just like it. It sounds cool. I like a little bit of a German accent. Uh, it's it's nice to listen to, so it'd be nice if I had some of that. Uh, because if I try to do a German accent now, it sounds like I'm faking it, because I don't have it. Um, and obviously it would be me faking it, because that's not how I normally speak. So it's it's... It's kind of a shame that I just have baseline English accent. Just become German. Yeah, it's that easy. Um, what would you say are the most crucial parts of the foundations of a fantasy world? I'm often finding myself obsessing over small details that don't lend to the identity of the world or broad scale. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Like, the thing is, I, I totally do the same. I, I get lost in small little details as well all the time, where I just think about things way too much that don't have any meaning in the grand scheme of things. So, I don't really know what the what the main, like, crucial thing to, that is that is a part of the world has to be. Uh, normally, I guess for me, it's just the crucial thing about the world was that I wanted to get all the things that I like into it. So, there are lots of parts of the world that I'm passionate about. And and that I love because they are they are they came from places that of of just me adding things for the sake of I like these things and I want to put them in. So those parts are like the main focus, I guess. We find our way as we chart our path with blood, sweat, and ink. Yes, there you go. There's your answer. Very poetic. Thank you very much, Stardust. People are always surprised when you pull out a German word. Yeah, I guess so. But I did mess something up because um, in the uh, a few people did mention it in the comments of the uh, currency video. I was talking about a German saying called "Ich drück, mit, ich drück dir die Daumen," which means uh, like uh, "I wish you luck" or like "I'm I'm rooting for you." Like literally, "Ich drück mir die, dir die Daumen." Uh, but because I haven't heard the saying in like years. Right, I haven't talked to any German people and stuff like that in German, and I haven't heard anybody say that saying. In my head, it has become wrong. I said "Ich drück mir die Daumen," um, which you know, that's "mir" is for me, which doesn't make sense. It should be "Ich drück dir die Daumen," so I'm pressing my thumbs for you. Uh, so yeah, that doesn't really. I I made a little bit of a mistake, but yeah, still, it was people knew what saying I was talking about, so. Still works. But yeah, how do I make an environment with sparsely littered trees? I really do love your voice. It is very interesting. Thank you. I appreciate it. I wonder what is interesting about it, but yes, thank you. Appreciate it. What? What's happening? Um, I'm just going to search sparse forest. And, ah, yes, 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 yes. This is literally, oh, I can't, I was like, I, I, I pressed control C on the image to like copy it, to put it in my program. But I, I'm drawing on a 
<laughs> I can't show you the image because it's not, you know. Um, oh, what? Uh, hello, I'm a big fan. I was just wondering if there has any uh, trains in this world. I was thinking about trains for a little bit, but in the end, I feel like I'm landing on there are no trains yet. Um, I don't think that would be... Yeah, I, I, I don't have any trains yet. I'm on the... F I'm on the fence. I, I don't know. I like trains, but I don't know if they fit in the world yet. Uh, what made you move to Thailand, and when did you move? Uh, I, I, I came here when I was, like, a really uh, young kid. Like, I didn't have any uh, choice. My parents moved here because of uh, retirement, you know? So um, it was, like, the best option. We have family here. Uh, we had a plot of land to, like, make a nice, build a nice house and stuff like that. So yeah, it was sort of the best option that we had. Uh, after retiring. Uh, and obviously, I was a kid, so I didn't, like, understand uh, it that much. But but now that I'm older, you know, I do. It's It was very much a good choice to be in Thailand. Because it's also the thing that, fortunately, makes it so that I can sustain myself from the YouTube and the, the Patreon. Like, I surprisingly actually... I, I, I make enough money through through the Patreon and stuff to, like sustain myself which is which is just wonderful i wouldn't be able like i don't make enough money to like i i i would for sure fucking starve to death in in america or something i very much don't make enough money to live in america or any other country that that i know of in like europe or anything so yeah thailand was really really the 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 right choice that made it even possible for me to like make a living off of this in the first place Uh, hey, I'm usually watching like a creep and not commenting, but I really like your artwork and especially voice. I love listening to your pod. You like a podcast. Oh, uh, thank you, Vez. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with watching like a creep. <laughs> that's that's normal. I do that with a bunch of streams too. Uh, I've I've I have very sneakily and stealthily uh, gone back to my Twitch account and sometimes hop into some random art streams just to lurk and listen. To them again like you know I, I used to do that more often in the past uh, and and i've sort of stopped watching streams nowadays but now i'm sort of getting back into it to just have some uh some noise going on in the background while drawing and stuff like that uh was there a eureka moment when you were when you felt like that your world was suddenly alive because i'm hunting for that moment the slow uh gestation period of fantasy world is a killer no there wasn't really a eureka moment like that but i there were multiple moments where i added something to the world where i was like oh yeah this is awesome you know or like things fell into place but it sort of like all happened naturally it wasn't like a ah yes we finally got through all the steps ta-da we have a perfect world now it was more like okay like it often happens with the magic system because the magic system is like, well, it's a system of rules and uh, that, that dictate how magic works. And because I laid them out, things sort of fall nicely into place where it's like I can design things to have it work with the magic system and, uh, and, and stuff like that, which is just so satisfying when it all like nicely slots in together. You know, where uh, with, for example, I didn't intentionally think about it at first, but the the world pillars for example the world pillars when i added them to the world um i thought oh i i like thai art let me have them be inspired by thai art so they have like thai patterns on it and stuff like that um which i haven't had a good done a good job illustrating yet but uh i will for sure like try to like illustrate the patterns on the pillars a lot better but they have thai patterns and the more i thought about it and i only realized this recently thai patterns um i have this book about it actually um where do I have my book? Hold on. Let me... Whoops. I'll be right back. Let me get the book. And you know how I said that the magic system was attracted to fractals and stuff like that? Well, funny thing is... Simlapa uh, Thai. But the, the funny thing is, Thai patterns sort of do have a fractal property to them. Because every pattern in, in, or like most of the patterns you see 
in Thai patterns have sort of stages they go through where you can add more and more detail to the same pattern. Uh, you'll see, like, here, like, you can keep adding shit to the same pattern, and it keeps getting smaller and smaller and more detailed, which, in the end, funnily enough, sort of makes it like fractals, which means it's fucking perfect. That was one of those eureka moments where I was like, huzzah! Unintentional, but so satisfying. <laughs> Like, that actually fits perfectly for, for like, the magic system. You see, uh, this book is wonderful, by the way. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if you could get this book, but I, I saw it in a bookstore, and I immediately had to get it. Uh, I don't know if any of this helps you be able to find it. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's where you can get it. So, uh, perhaps pause on that? Uh, I don't know. But yeah, maybe maybe you want to get the book if you're interested in Thai patterns because it has like some some wonderful. Hold on, <laughs> let me let me use my beautiful feature that I just uh, implemented into my new camera stand and extend it so you can see more. There you go. Yeah, it has some wonderful like breakdowns of of how the patterns are done and stuff like that. Uh, and also, like, all the ratios. Like, the thing is with Thai patterns is all of it is perfect ratios. Like, there's none of this that's, that's just like, oh, yeah, let, let me just guess that this is, like, that long or something. All of it's on a grid system and and with, with golden ratios and shit like that. So that's why it looks so satisfying and sort of perfect when you look at it. Or, um, like, here, look at how much fucking like how many lines and breakdowns there are for all of this i wonder who made that amer amazing camera stand yeah i wonder too yeah oh look at this stuff yeah the see the fractals where it's like oh yeah you can do it this detailed this detailed or this detailed it's fractals but yeah the the, the further you go in the book the crazier it gets like at the end you start going into Whatever the fuck that is. Um, or, or like, this shit. It just gets... Or... Oh, these are so good. Like, uh, sort of edges and stuff like that. Edge patterns that repeat are also a thing. So those are really nice as well. Uh, I, I took one of those to decorate the gun, but it's, it's, it's very low detail on mine. Yeah, all this stuff is so good. Ooh. Oof. Like, <laughs> I, I'm definitely never gonna be able to match this. Because obviously this requires, like, years and years of practice to get all the ratios perfect and it, for it to, like, flow so beautifully. And I just draw it by hand, like, I estimate all of it. I don't measure out any of the lines when I draw tie patterns, which is blasphemy. But, um, but it, I, I hope to get close enough to it one day. No. Oh, pillars! Yeah, here you go. See? I I wanted to take inspiration from Thai art for pillars, and look at these pillars. Oh, that's so good. They look so fucking good. Like, you'll see these on the side of temples and shit like that. Like, I, I've totally seen a temple that has decorations on the side of it like this. Or, like, these decorations sort of coming out of... I haven't seen this on a temple coming out like that, but if I did, I'd... Uh... I'd be very happy. Like, that's just, like, that flow. I don't know what what kind of ratio that is. I don't know. But just this to this is so perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely have to look at this stuff when I, when I design the pillars. And look at that. The, the headgear, or, like, uh... Finally going into, like, the faces of, uh, like, the monkeys and, and the, the giants. Yuck. Okay, okay, that's, that's enough, though. Feet! Mmm! Oh, feet. A whole page dedicated to feet. Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah, my god. For free? No, it wasn't for free. What do you mean? 
feet for free. It wasn't for free. It was 240 baht for the damn feet page. Bro just outed himself. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, feet. Anyway. Uh, I, I did find a reference uh, on my computer of like a sparse uh, forest and I this is gonna be hard to capture like there's sort of some amount of cheating that you can do when the forest is very dense uh, cuz when the forest is dense like they sort of just line next to each other but when it becomes more sparse it's like you have to select your grouping of trees a lot more and you have to be a lot more focused on the distances and size of trees when they start going further away. Hey, just wondering, how much longer you plan on streaming? I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna stream as long as I feel like it, and as soon as I don't feel like it, I'm gonna stop streaming. That's the plan. Oh, let me move the stand lower. God, such a convenient device. Uh, but if you were to buy it in Europe, it'd be more than 22. Yeah, yeah, for sure it'd be more expensive in, in like, Europe and America, for sure. The best part of this is Simon out of context. God. Steering forever until dead. No. Not planning to do that. I'm gonna go because it's late. Take care, gas mask. First time catching stream live. Welcome, welcome, the giant rat. Uh, glad to have you in the stream. We're working on a, uh... YouTube background banner. I don't think we're going to move to drawing on the computer today. We're just planning it out, and then I'm probably going to do it off stream if I feel like it. Uh, but yeah, the sparse trees. Hold on. Let me look at the reference while doing this. God, the sparse trees are definitely hard, and it's especially because I'm doing the scene from a sort of up angle. If I did a down angle, then I would be able to show, you know, the the plane of the environment and show the trees sort of coming out from different places like this, which makes it a lot easier to make a sparse forest. But because I'm doing it from an up angle, you don't see the ground that these trees come from, which means I am solely reliant on the size and width of the tree, which means I'll have to do, like, this... And then have one like further in the distance, like this, but then like that. Like that looks a lot worse if I get it wrong than this. Because like this is easier to tell that they're sparse. So how the hell am I going to do that? Yeah, something like that, I guess, could work. Okay, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go piss.
You're right, actually. I can make it foggy. I sort of keep forgetting that fog is an option. Even though I like fog a lot in scenes, I keep forgetting that fog is something I can add to a scene. So yeah, I... Okay, let's do... It has to be foggy, which means it'll... It'll be faded enough around the distance, like, further in the distance, so it'll be hard to tell. Uh, then also, like, the time period, or, or what time of day it is, would also be quite interesting to think about. Bro? Uh, ghost. What? Ghost in corner. No, it's just me. I might have been the ghost in the corner. Wait, hold on. Ooh. Wait. Okay. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. Creepy. God damn it. Uh, why not make the banner a sexy pinup of your comb? My god. Watch out, you're haunted? Not my house? My house is not haunted? It's me who's haunted? The fuck? <laughs> oh shit, a rat ghost. Shiver. Shiver me timbers! Ooh. Okay, here's a noodle ghost as well. Oh, oh god! The stringworm ghost is strangling me! Ooh. <laughs> Zoinks! That scared me shitless. But yeah, okay, sparse force. So, time of day. I was thinking it was sort of like sunset ish getting dark. That's the time. Sunset ish getting dark. Uh, sort of enough that. Okay, so it's getting dark enough where. The fireplace in the scene does emanate light to the surrounding area. So the light is, um, like, dim. Like, there's no strong shadows. All of it's sort of dim. And then the, the, the fire is what casts shadows of the characters onto the background. So the fire is the brightest light source in the scene. Dusk, I think, is the word you're looking for. No, no, I'm clearly looking for the word sunset-ish getting dark. Um, that's the right term to call this time period, or time of day. If you're spellcasting on your... Yorm, who's the good hook? Yorm, who's the god of magic, has seven fingers on each hand. Given the fingers are very important... Uh, thematic element. Does the number seven have any importance? No. No, it doesn't. It's just that that specific illustration of Yorm, I thought of giving him seven fingers. Uh, other illustrations of, of Yorm would have up to hundreds or, or you know, tens or hundreds of fingers sometimes. Depends on the artist that illustrates it. Ugh. I think that's going to be enough for today's stream. I need a break. <laughs> oh, oh. Daily life in... Daily life in... No. A, a day in the life of a niche micro-celebrity on YouTube. I woke up in the morning and then got to my desk to stream. But then I only drew for like a little bit and got tired. And then I went back to bed. <laughs> that, that's... I'm that meme right now. But yes, I am a little tired. I'm a little eepy, and I'm gonna go take a little bit of a nappy. 
a, a nappy? Wait, no, isn't a nappy like a baby diaper? I'm gonna take a nap. A nappy, I think, is a baby diaper if I'm if I'm not mistaking. <laughs> but yes, I'm I'm very much embodying that meme right now. I woke up in the morning and to get myself some energy, I took some I took some gamer what's that called? Gamers? The 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 energy drink that they're fucking promoting. Yeah, that gamer gamer subs, yeah. I drank some gamer subs and sat down at the chair to edit some videos, but I didn't stream today because I got too tired and went to bed. <laughs> I was gonna go shower, but then I fell asleep on the way to the shower. All of the classics. But yeah, I I am gonna draw a little later probably, but I, I need to lay down a little bit. I've my my sleep's th that's the thing as well, by the way. It's not that I'm just an EP man. It's I, I I slept at a very bad time. I went to bed at like four, almost five a.m. last night, which is not uh, if if you don't know, that is not really a good healthy time to go to sleep at. So now it's coming back to haunt me. Um, ooh, ghosts! I said the word haunt. Ah! Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I I do hope you enjoyed the stream, even though it was not. Uh, as long as as my normal ones uh we did get a fair amount of thought and uh designing done i mean we know what kind of scene we want now uh and we designed some nice trees uh so yeah surprisingly enough it seems like i can get a lot more drawing done uh in a stream uh, in my sketchbook than i can on a uh on a on a drawing program well it's just because i'm more comfortable with this i guess but yeah anyway I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, take care, and uh, see you in the next one.